hello everyone welcome to my channel and in this video i will show you how to create kubernetes cluster in azure so before we proceed let's first understand what is kubernetes a kubernetes is also known as k8 is open source system for automating a deployment scaling and management of containerized application Kubernetes is developed by Google and now it's managed by CNCF. Kubernetes is a way to run your containerized application in a consistent and reliable way across all the nodes. The key benefits of the Kubernetes, it's allow a developer to focus on writing the code while infrastructure is by default handled by Kubernetes. You can scale up and scale down the application based on your demand. Kubernetes has a concept called cluster and a cluster is a set of node where you can deploy your application. Node can be either physical or virtual. A cluster can have a one or multiple nodes. Kubernetes also provides some key benefit to manage your application. The first benefit is deployment control for rolling out and rolling back the application. The second one is service discovery and load balancing for exposing application to the outside world. The third one is storage orchestration for store your data. Fourth one is a self healing for automatically replacing and rescheduling failed containers. So now let's understand the Kubernetes architecture. Kubernetes architecture is similar like a master worker node architecture where mas master node responsibility for managing the desired state of Kubernetes and make sure that all the components associated with the master node is run as intended. Now let's understand the first component of master node called HCD database. HCD database is a key value store to maintaining the state of your Kubernetes cluster and the configuration. The second one is a control manager as a name suggests for managing a various controller that handle things like replication, self healing, storage orchestration, distributed control. The API server for exposing the Kubernetes API and interact with the SCD database. And the fourth one is a scheduler, as the name suggests, whenever you create or a scalar application, the scheduler responsibility to determine what node can run the workload and state of them. In the worker node, the key components are kubelet, kubeproxy, and container runtime. The kubelet for communicating the API server and managing the lifecycle of pod. The container runtime for pulling and starting the container on the node. And the kube proxy for implementing the service networking model. Now I have a dedicated video for each and every component. Now let's understand about the node pool. So node pool is a set of virtual machine with the same configuration. So now whenever you create a Kubernetes cluster in Azure, by default, AKS create a system node pool, having a critical component like core DNS, metric server, tunnel front and OMS agent. And user node pool is optional. It is created by you where you can deploy your application. So in the demo section, we are going to create Kubernetes cluster in Azure. So, so for that, first open the portal.azure.com and click the Kubernetes services, or you can search here Kubernetes services and click on create Kubernetes cluster. After that, give the resource group. So here I will create a resource group name a case demo. 
choose the uh, cluster present configuration so it's a demo purpose so i will go with the dev and test give the kubernetes cluster name so i give the name ak as demo select the region so i will go with the southeast asia and uh, kubernetes version i will go with the 1.23.8 uh, API server availability, I go with the 99.5%. Uh, in the real time scenario for the production, you can go with the 99.9%. Uh, auto upgrade, so I am going to disable the auto upgrade. Node size, I am going to select here. the cheapest node size because it's a demo purpose and here the scale method so you can configure auto scale but here i will go with the manual with the one node count click on the next so now in the uh, presentation we see uh, whenever you create a kubernetes cluster AKS by default create a system node pool and in the system node pool we have a critical component called core DNS, metric server, tunnel front and OMS agent. So let me first add one more node pool and I am going to add the user node pool and this node pool we can use for deploy our application. Okay node pool is nothing but is a set of virtual machine so in the background it will create a virtual machine for us and the os type will be the linux let me choose the node size so again i will go with the cheap paste option so let me select this and here i will go with the manual and i will add only one node count okay and i'm not going to change this default configuration uh, I will go to the next, 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 review and create. And click on the create button. So this is the easiest way to create a Kubernetes cluster in Azure. So there are multiple way to create a Kubernetes cluster in Azure. You can use ARN template, you can use PowerShell, you can create using Terraform. But first I will show you the easiest method to create a Kubernetes cluster. So now the deployment is in progress. Let's wait. Okay, now deployment is completed. Click on go to resource and here you are inside the Kubernetes cluster. So in Azure, this is a managed Kubernetes cluster. It means that this control plane or this master node is managed by the Azure. And you have to just design your worker node. By default, Kubernetes will not charge any rupee to having a master node. Whenever you create a worker node, you are going to be charged. So now let's uh, connect this AK server in our local machine. So click on connect, click copy the first command and open the terminal. Let me select the Ubuntu. and paste it okay now let me copy the second command okay now my cube cluster configuration are stored in this cube file okay now let let me start with the first cube curtail command so first command to check your config so kubectl
config view. So using this command, you can see your configuration file. So here you can see our AKS demo user is this current context is this. Now our AKS cluster is configured in my local machine. Now let's quickly check. So kubectl get nodes. So we have created the two nodes. The first one is the Asian pool or you can say system node pool which is created by the AKS cluster by default. And the second one is a user project that we have created during our demo section. Now let's check <coughs> the kubectl. So here kubectl get pods minus minus all the namespaces. So this command will return all the pods running inside our Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Now here you can see as we discussed during the presentations this agent, cube proxy, matrix servers, core DNS these are the core components are stored inside this agent pool. Here you can see. Okay. So here I am using one software called Lens which will give you the GUI of our Kubernetes cluster. So let me open the LAN software. So by default, it will fetch the data from our config file. Let me select our Kubernetes cluster and let me connect the cluster. Now here you can see, here you can see we have a two nodes. One is a agent pool. Second one is a user, user project. And inside this workload, this is a Kubernetes objects. So first one is a pod, second one is deployment, third one is daemon set, fourth one is a stateful set, replication state, jobs, current jobs. Now, I have a dedicated video to give you the complete detail about this. Now let's first go to the pods. Let me select all the namespaces and here you can see core DNS, Azure disk file, Kubernetes connectivity agent, cube proxy for managing the networking, matrix servers. So this all the components by default store in the agent pool. Now in the next video, we are going to deploy the application inside this Kubernetes cluster as well as we are going to understand this Kubernetes objects. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.